So today, my topic is about ACOM installation and configuration. So uh, with previous session, you may already have an initial impression about what ACOM's usage and what ACOM's overall architecture and how ACOM focus on real-time and safety usage. Now, if you have interest to play with ACOM and uh, want to have some practice on that, so I hope that my session will help you on this. Uh, with my session, you could follow me to go deep into one ACOM's maybe hello world, uh, set up ACOM and launch user VM. I will explain this in below three parts. The first one is what do you need to know upfront, which including some basic concept of ACOM that you need to know before you start all that will help you understand the document and help you to solve some issues when you uh, try ACOM. And, and also you, you need to know where to find the useful guide to help you and how to start. That's my sec the first part. The second part, I will lead you to walk through the Getting Started Guide on ACOM website. I would like to talk about the various steps in the Getting Started Guide and the major describe the, the high level flow, the guide, or what the guide did do. And you may find all the details in the ACOM online Getting Started Guide. So the third part, I will focus on the ACOM complicated configuration and uh, high level introduce the ACOM configuration tool set. You may already know the, the configuration tool in previous section. We will use this tool to uh, for your customize the configuration for ACOM. So uh, this tool will help you to ease to configure ACOM. After my session, there's one follow-up session to provide one example for how to use ACOM conversion tool set to enable ACOM on new platform. So this, uh, this is my brief uh, agenda. Let's go to the, okay, let's go to the first part. What do you need to know upfront? So, before you started to play with ACOM, I believe you already have some usage scenario in your mind. You may already think about why you want to use ACOM. SARS, I, I would like to ask you for below questions, uh, questions answers before you started. Uh, the first one is how many VMs you want to launch and uh, do you have special requirement for each VM? For example, do you need a RTVM with good real-time performance or do you need a static partition VM to have a better isolation between VMs due to high security requirement? Or what OS for each VM you preferred, Linux or Windows? Or which Linux dis distribution you prefer, Ubuntu, Debian, Zephyr, or Xenoman, or Vilworks, or others? Do you have preference for kernel version, uh, for example, the 5.4, 5.10, or the latest kernel? These questions will be related with ACON's various configuration, so you could have these answers in mind and moving forward. So the next serious questions that you, you may need to take care of is what the devices or resources allocation for each VM. You, you prefer. These are many hard, there are many hardware devices and resources. For example, the graphic, the network, the disk, and the CPU core. So how do you want to allocate this resource between each VM, sharing them between each VM or pass through to one of VM? So what's your special requirement for device resource allocation? So that's the second, the, the second serial questions you, you may need to have answers in your mind. And the third serious questions may be that what feature or what load you want to run in each VM. After ACOM and each VM running, we have some advanced features. For example, enable inter-VM uh, communication, enable ACOM secure boot, 
around Kata container on service VM or using OpenStack and Libre to config ACOM. So if you want to enable these features, we have the feature guide available on ACOM GitHub website, which you could find in uh, below link, the project acon.github.io. Here we, we have all the ACON technique document as these pictures you can see. Here is our uh, the ACON, project ACON document home. We separate them to the several parts. So the first part you can see, this is the what is the ACON. Here we have the guide for the overview and architecture, the features and use case scenario introduction. With this page, you can have the basic understanding for the ACOM. Then the second section is for the getting started. Uh, here, the getting started, we have some uh, basic document to tell you how to choose the hardware, how to uh, build ACOM, and there are some getting started guide for a basic scenario. And, and today our getting started guide is located in this section. And then we, we had some advanced guides that help you if you want to do some customized task based on a So there are some introduction for the tools, for the tutorials and the features. And also we have some debugging guides that you can go beyond getting started. And also we have the developer, developer reference. This is a high level design and details, developer and the contribution guidelines and API developers. This could help developer to contribute their own P, uh, pull request, their own code into our account uh, repo. So uh, analysis is our release note. Um, we have the cadence for ACON release, and for each release, we will have one release note to, to tell the user uh, what's new in, the, in this release and uh, which tag you, you could get, uh, get the ACON release, release code. And in this release, we have some new features implemented, and we also have some bug fix and we have some no issues uh, in, during this release. So this is the release note. And, and, and then we will have the supporting hardware to help user to choose the hardware he, he wants to, want to use. So let's go to the, uh, the second. Yeah, here. So uh, before we start to go on the uh, GST guide, we, we still need some basic concept for ACOM. So uh, you may need to know the basic terminology using in ACOM document. We have this link here. We list all these, uh, our groceries in, in this in ACOM. So you may, uh, for example, uh, the service VM means the service uh, is genera generate the first VM launched by ACOM and can access hardware resources directly by running native drivers and provide service sharing service to user VM while the device model. So other VMs we call the user VMs and we also distinguish user VM by launch order. If the VM is launched before service VM, we call them pre-launched VM. And if the VM is launched via service VM, we call them post-launch VM. Sometimes you may uh, still see some obsolete terminology using uh, during the Git issue discussion or doc docs, such as the SOS, UOS, etc. You could also refer to the grocery term for more details to have better understanding account terminology. This will help you to understand, follow the guide. So another thing may be uh, important to a new account user is that there are many static configuration items, various runtime configuration in account. Since account is designed to meet full-size requirement, 
we have to limit some dynamic way in Acon code, which introduce many static configuration. Uh, I will tell more about Acon configuration in my following slides, and we provide one configuration tool to help use to configure Acon. All about uh, helping you to understand Acon before you decide to hands on and play with Acon. Then you need to find our Getting Start Guide on Acon GitHub website. This guide will help you to set up one Acon Hello World. With this, with this, this setup, you will have more deep understanding and experience on Acon. And it could be a starting point for you to learn Acon and use Acon for your further investigation. So you, you, can, you can find the link uh, to, to, the, to our Getting Started Guide out on our Acon web, website. So let's, let's move to the second part, working through the Getting Started Guide. So the target of our GSD guide, uh, with this guide, you will set up Acon with a specific scenario on specific hardware. Here for the specific target board, now we recommend to use the, the Maxton Intel WISCLIC board, but we are ongoing to update our GSG to the new platform, Tiglic NUC. So you will see the new recommended hardware in Acon uh, 2.5 release next month. For the specific scenario in this GSG guide, we recommend the typical industrial use case that you could see from this picture. From, from this picture, you could see about, about Acon, there's one service VM. The OS for this service VM is Ubuntu 1804. Maybe we will update this version in our foreign release. And, uh, and also there's two post-launch VM. One is the RTVM, which installing the preamp RT kernel into Ubuntu 1804. Another is Windows VM, we provide one example tutorials to guide user to create a Windows 10 image as a user VM. So here, uh, once you follow up our GSG guide, you will set up one scenario uh, as this picture show. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see the prerequisites. So uh, when you start to follow the GST guide, uh, you need to have the necessary peripherals. So for example, you, you need to have one Ubuntu bootable USB disk to help you to install the Ubuntu system on SATA and on NVMe disk. And also you need the HDMI monitors connected and the USB keyboard and mouse. And Ethernet cables will help you to copy some binaries between your host and the target board. So that, that's the basic per peripherals requirement. And also, if you want to have some debug capability, we recommend the user to have the UART port uh, for, for debug. But with a cons uh, UART console, you can see more, uh, you can use some Acon shell to, uh, to monitor the VM status, and some debug tools you can use uh, to debug Acon. And you can see some uh, zero console log to see what happened during your, your setup uh, process. Uh, we also have some dependency except the Acon. Uh, you have to have the Ubuntu image. Uh, that, that will be our root FS for service VM and guest VM. Uh, you, you need the grub installed because we use grub to load Acon. And also you need the IASL tools, which are used for um, Acon build after our uh, maybe 2.2 to two, two release. And uh, we also need the IASL tools to launch the guest VM. And you, have, you, you need to prepare for the RTVM images and the Windows image for the post launch VM. Uh, another thing I want to emphasize is the BIOS setting. 
before you start uh, run ACON, you, you need to take care of the bio setting because by different BIOS version and BIOS setting may provide different hardware information to ACON. So uh, at least to boot up ACON, you, you need to enable the VMX VTD and also disable the secured boot. Secure boot. So uh, from the GST guide, you will see more BIOS settings. There's uh, maybe not essential for the boot, but they are essential to the RTVM's uh, real-time performance. So uh, take care of the BIOS setting and uh, maybe in foreign uh, section, when I in introduce the conversion tool, we, we want to run the tools to, to get your board information. We, um, we, you are required to get the board information based on a certain BIOS setting because the, the BIOS setting is, is sensitive for the board information. Uh, the, the last thing you, you need to know is the ACON source code and ACON kernel, which we are used for SOS uh, service VM kernel. And you need to prepare for the build environment to build ACON and build ACON kernel. Uh, there are, you, you, you will take some time to pour the ACON kernel and build. It, it takes a lot of time. So it, that, that's the uh, condition. So the major steps for the uh, GSG, we, we have the, the six parts. The, the first part is for the hardware connection. Uh, you, you can connect uh, the HDMI and connect the US, USB and also the UART. Then you, you, could, you need to install the Ubuntu user VM uh, on the SATA disk and install the Ubuntu service VM on the only ME disk. Here we use two disks to, to have these VMs, two VM, VMs, because we want to make the RTVM has better performance. Mm. And then you need to pull the ACON code and build and install ACON on Ubuntu. And then for the, the launch, we need to prepare the launch script uh, to launch the RTVM and launch the Windows VM. For Windows VM creation, we also have another document to, uh, to tell how to create the Windows image. So uh, here I can briefly go through here. So you can see this is our getting started guide for ACON industry scenario and uh, uh, Ubuntu service VM. Uh, we usually list some verified version here. For each release, we will do some verification based on the specific uh, uh, version number, for example, the Ubuntu version, the GCC version, and the, the hypervisor, the, this is the release branch, the, this is the tag for ACON code, and also we have the ACON kernel tag. Uh, we have the RT kernel uh, for the RTVM, and this is our hardware. The prerequisite is uh, uh, we need to enable the BIOS and the Ubuntu uh, USB disk the monitor, the USB keyboard, and Ethernet. And we need to prepare for the graph. Uh, for the hardware connection, we, we connect the board with the HTML cable, a mouse keyboards enable an uh, Ethernet cable, and uh, insert the Ubuntu USB disk. The second section is to install the Ubuntu user VM on the SATA disk. And the third is install Ubuntu service VM on the NVMe disk. And here we need build and install ACON on Ubuntu. So we, we need to install the necessary libraries that ACON build uh, dependency. And here we also need the IASL tools to compile an offline ACPI binary for pre-launch VM. So this tool is what we, we need to get the version and then um, make, make this in, into our uh, work, work DIR. And getting the source code and build ACON. 
Here, we also need to pull the ACON kernel code and build ACON kernel. Currently, here we, we are focused on the 5.4 kernel and install the kernel, including the busy image and also the kernel libraries. And then we need to update the graph for the Ubuntu service VM to add the uh, ACON image load and, and also SOS kernel load. When we reboot, here is the checkpoint. Uh, you can use this message to check whether you, you have run ACON successfully. So uh, until now, you already run ACON. Others, we, we need to, uh, we have some additional setting in the service VM. This is the BIOS setting. And here we we need to install our RT kernel for the Ubuntu user VM to make it as the RT VM. So the RT kernel, we can notice that it's located on ACON kernel, the branch, which is we call the 5.19 preempted RT. So when you build this kernel and you install it into the user VM, and, and then you need to prepare for the RT VM image, update the graph files, and uh, use the launch script, which are already in our repo. Here, this launch script is for the RTVM launch. These are the BIOS setting is sensitive for RTVM performance. Mm, and uh, after the RTVM configuration, you can run the cyclic test to, to have some uh, test on the uh, RT performance. And here we have the uh, launch the Windows VM. Windows VM, we have the separate guide to, to guide you how to uh, create Windows image. It's a, a little complicated uh, guide. And after you create the Windows VM, you, you can use the launch script to launch the Windows VM. So uh, that's our current GSG described. Uh, when we have some um, foreign app working to, to improve, since there are uh, so many steps for current GSG guide, and we hope that we can uh, find some better solution to improve the, uh, to reduce the steps and uh, um, to provide the better user and developer experience. But moving forward, if you already uh, run the GSG on your on your local so you can if you want have more requests to porting acon into the new hardware and uh, customize configurations that is partition and you, you want to enable new features so here uh, the conference tool set could help you so for the the third part i i want to introduce for the configuration tool set uh, i will go through from this four section why is the configuration tool set overview or why we have this tool and what's the tool usage? And the second is the configuration hierarchy. And then we, we will have the uh, configuration tool set architecture. The, the fourth, I will have some configuration tool set workflow. So here- And Lin? This, yes? Yeah, this is Jeffrey here. You have about 10 minutes left. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Okay, uh, I will use this 10 minutes to introduce the conference tool set. Uh, here, uh, this is what why we have this conference tool, uh, tool set. Uh, we want to um, meet the requirement for the ACON advanced user. Uh, for, I, as I said, for the previous GSG guide, we dedicate on the specific hardware and the specific uh, scenario. But if you want to use your own hardware, and your own scenario. So that's our conference tool will help you. And uh, uh, you can see these pictures. We, we have the board information, which we can uh, get from our hardware. And uh, we have some user scenario requirements in, in the user's mind. This is our input. And after our tools uh, handling, we will have some output for the we were generating some .c and .h source code for comp compilation. And also we'll generate the launch script 
uh, I just mentioned, when you launch the Windows or launch the RTVM, you will have some launch script. So for the configuration tool, we, we get uh, users board information and get user scenario requirement. And we after our handling, we will generate the configuration source code for the compilation. And also we will generate the uh, launch script. So here you can see the configuration hierarchy. Uh, at the bottom, there's the board information. There are some, uh, we get this information from the hardware and the BIOS setting. So there's all kinds of information that would maybe sensitive for a compute. So we get them and uh, install them in the board XML. And then here, including the configuration um, for the hypervisor. For hypervisor, we have our own, for example, the hypervisor maximum number. We, we need to know the master CPU number and the, the email, emulated the MMI regions. And also we will have some debug option for the release and the debug and the log level and the log stat. And we, we, ha we also have some hybrid hypervisor features switch. You can disable or enable some features. This is the hypervisor configuration. And also we have the uh, most important part of conversion is the VM configuration. Here VM, uh, as I just mentioned, VM, we, we have the service VM, and we also have the pre-launch VM, which launched before the before service VM. And we also have the, have the post-launch VM, which will launch after service VM. So uh, we have the global VM configuration that is all uh, applied to the older VM. And, and we also have the separate configuration for pre-launch VM and the service VM. And we also have the post-launch VM settings. So here, um, for the post-launch VM settings, some of the parts we, we, we could uh, configure it while the launch script. That means we could change the configuration dynamically. But for others VM, we, we need to uh, define them at the build, building time. That means that's the static configuration. If you change any of them, you have to rebuild. So uh, that, that's, that's why I said ACON has many static configuration and you, you have to take care of this configuration. So all these configurations is complicated and we want to make user too easy to config. Uh, if, for example, for the hardware side, we provide the board inspector tools in configuration tool. You can run this board inspector on your hardware and we will correct all the information that we wanted to into store it into the board XML. And with this board XML, we will have the date schema check to identify whether your, your hardware is not suitable to run ACOM or you need to change your BIOS setting to enable the VMX, ATD, something like that. So here, uh, we will use this tool to help you to get the board information. Another part is a user have some customization uh, configuration. Here we provide one configuration edit. It's, it's a UI edit, and uh, uh, but, but we, we have the simple UI uh, configuration edit. Here, it will help you to generate the scenario, hypervisor, and VM XML, which will include uh, the hypervisor configuration and VM configuration um, of, of this configuration hierarchy. Um, it will generate one scenario configuration. And another thing is we, we will have uh, generated the device model, uh, launch script XML. The, uh, this XML will help you to generate the launch script. So uh, another thing compression tool did is we will build uh, with this board XML, scenario XML as input, we will generate the ACOM binary and also we will generate the launch script for the, for your, uh, when you launch the, la uh, the post launch script. So that's the, um, uh, the major compression tool architecture. And, uh, uh, recently, in, in this recent release, we add some schema check for the board XML and for the scenario XML. We have some schema check 
to um, to make sure that you can uh, generate the correct configuration for ACOM. And also we add some generated code schemer that, that's helped us for the XML transition to the um, compression source code. So the, the last page is who uh, at least the conversion tool set workflow. So the basic uh, steps for the conference tour is first you need to get the board XML, which you will need to uh, get it from your target board. And then you need to get the scenario XML, which you can use the UI tools. And then with the board XML and scenario XML, you can build all of them and deploy on your target board. So that's the overall steps for the compression tool. So the last page for the summary, uh, we suggest that if you are newer for the ACOM, you, you can try the getting started guys, getting started guide firstly as your starting point. And after this guide, you will have the uh, overall picture of and the hands-on experience on ACOM. Um, and if you have some questions or met some issues, you can find the Git issues in Acon, uh, GitHub, and we will have some support on that. And also, uh, if you have some, after the, you try the Getting Start Guide, you have some customized configuration or requirement, you can use the Acon Configuration Tool to uh, customize your configuration and build and run Acon. So uh, next session, we will have an example for you to, uh, to, to let you know how to use Confident Tool Set to enable ACOM on new platform. OK, thanks. Thank you, Nanlin. Folks, so any question for Nanlin before we move on to the next session and the uh, final session of the day? There was one question on the chat whether we can uh, pause the presentations and, and yes, we will put them in a folder and then share the location with everyone. Okay, so if there are no question for, oh, question for, is it possible to use only one physical disk? So the, the, the I think the short answer to that one is, is yes, it all depends on the, on the scenario you want to use. So for example, typically we use a couple of disks basically uh, because we need uh, we want to have a real-time virtual machine. So when we want to have, have a real-time virtual machine, you have a dedicated hardware. But if you don't need that, you can certainly have a, a like a, an installation starting virtual machine directly with only a single physical disk in the machine. Now, if you want to have a real-time VM based on Linux, for example, that is hosted on the same physical disk as a service VM, then that is, I don't, that it, you will have side effects to that one because basically you have different machine accessing the same hardware. So that will, um, so you cannot do a, 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 a storage controller pass through to the real-time virtual machine, which means it will be a shared resource at that point and, and the performance will be affected. <clears throat> 